My name is Lars Ulrich, and I play with Metallica. Can you tell us about your upbringing and what music was played when you were a kid? Well, I grew up in Copenhagen in the 60s, in Schubenau. And um, my dad uh, was very much involved in everything that was going on in Copenhagen in, in jazz music. He was writing about uh, jazz music for a couple of Danish newspapers. And uh, Copenhagen was very much, uh, at that time, um, at the center of, of jazz music in Western Europe. A lot of, of, of great jazz players from the United States not only came, obviously, and played, they, you know, they had uh, the Montmartre and, and a very, uh, you know, from the national radio and, and everybody was very supportive. But also a lot of jazz players um, actually ended up staying and, and, and spending extended amount of time uh, in Copenhagen. Uh, Sonny Rollins, uh, Ben Webster, uh, Dexter Gordon. Uh, and it was very, um, you know, the Danes were at that time and, and still are, I, I think, very into sort of uh, different things that were pushing the creative limits, that were pushing the creative barriers. And a lot of the jazz musicians felt very um, at home in Copenhagen. Uh, at that time, still in America, there was lots of issues with racism and, and segregation and so on. And when they came to Copenhagen, everybody welcomed them. Everybody was colorblind. Uh, the Danish ladies loved the American jazz players, and everybody felt very much um, at home in Copenhagen because Copenhagen is a, a very cozy and welcoming place, as you know. Lots of Swedes. When I was growing up, there were lots of Swedes coming over to Copenhagen, also. What have you, what have you taken from that upbringing that you have brought into this band? Well, I think from from my upbringing. Um, I grew up an only child, so I spent a lot of time hanging out with my parents. I never spent time rebelling against my parents. My parents, I thought my parents were the coolest people in the world. And um, so I was very much sort of immersed in everything that they were doing uh, around. Uh, my family were lots of music. Um, some of my uh, aunts and uncles are very well-known actors in Denmark. And I grew up all around a lot of, you know, sort of arts and painting and, and like we said, music and film and acting and so on. So um, I guess for me, it's just always been about uh, pushing the, the creative boundaries, never accepting the status quo, never accepting that everything has to be one way. Uh, always, I think in, in the Danish mentality is a little bit of being contrary always challenging things, pushing things, and being experimental. And, you know, when I started Metallica with James and we were just very into kind of doing our own thing, there was no other bands in America at that time that were really doing what we were doing. So we were always trying to sort of just uh, push the boundaries and, and never accept uh, sort of the, the, the way things were supposed to be. Can you describe your totally unique, unique way of playing drums? That's hard to follow what you just said. Thank you. Uh, let me turn the camera around. Um, I guess I've I've just you know to me it's always about the song, and the band first, and the drums or the guitars or whatever else is going on is just part of the big picture. So what you always have to do is you have to check your ego at the door and do what's best for, for the song, for the music, for the overall sound. Um, and so to me, what's always the most interesting to me about drumming is to how do you fit the drums into what else is going on? How does it work? Accents and special hits and kind of things that make it more rhythmic or more dynamic or, or, or just add a kind of a physicality to it. I've never been uh, very interested in ability. Uh, oh, wow, this guy's so great, yeah, he's so great, but it doesn't mean that he can make it swing or it doesn't mean that he can, you know, make it work within a group or collective. Uh, and so to me, it's just, you know, for as much as I grew up on people like Ian Pace from Deep Purple, who obviously has a lot of ability, I also love 
people like Phil Rudd and Charlie Watts, who has certain certainly certainly ability, but I think to a lot of purists, you know, maybe not so much because they're not as technical, but they have a different kind of ability that to me is as valuable and as precious and as important in that they make it swing, they make it move, they make it, it gives it that physicality that it needs. So I've always uh, just looked at drums as, um, as, as more of a, of a group instrument. I've never been very interested in playing drums by myself, you know, sitting down in the basement and practicing drum solos for hours at a time. That's not my thing. Uh, so being in a band, writing songs, making records, being part of a gang, being part of a band, that's, um, that's always fascinated me. Yeah, when you hear the music, you sort of really think of like a, this cool gang. Is, 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 is that something I thought of you want to give that emotion to the audience? Um, I mean, listen, the, the beautiful thing about music and any conversation about music is that there's no, there's no right or wrong. There's no way it has to be. There's no way that it isn't. It's just all, the music is down to personal interpretation. So what, there's six people in this room and we can all have a different answer to the same question about uh, well, how does this move you? What does this do to you? How does it speak to you? That's the, the, beauti the beautiful thing about music. Morricone, it's just, to me, it's a, it sets a mood. It, it's an attitude. It sets a, a particular feel. And, you know, to some people it means spaghetti westerns and to some people it means Clint Eastwood and to some people it means... Like you say, here comes a gang or whatever, and I think that's the beautiful thing. And same thing with with Metallica music. To everybody, everybody's got a different opinion. Isn't that beautiful? How do you think when you do the set list? Um. Well, first of all, I I don't set my sights on creating the perfect Metallica show. I I go one step lower on the bar, which is I try to make a different Metallica show every night. So um. Since 2003, I think late 2003, so about 15, coming up on 15 years, we haven't played the same set twice. And so um, what I tried to do is, so now we're in Madrid, and so I sit and I have the uh, information of the last 10 years we played in Madrid, and so I make a set list that's different than every time we've played in Madrid in the last 10 years and play Obviously, there's certain songs that um, we have to play or else we would get chased out of Spain. But, um, you know, I, I try to with what we call the deeper songs or, or you know, the, the some cover songs or some rarities. I try to always play different ones. Same thing when we come to Stockholm or we come to, to Gothenburg or whatever. We, um, we always play different songs and try to always give the fans um, a different experience than last time and a different experience the next time. And that's, to me, the most important is that you always play, whenever we come to Sweden, we play a different place than we did the last time. And so every time is always a different experience. So you don't see Metallica doing the same thing every time, twice in a row, That that's no good.